Have you ever wondered what makes bodies tick? Are you creating the sexual reality you desire and require? Would you like to know more about what else is possible with bodies? What if your fantasies are not as strange as you thought they were? What if you could learn to be kinder to your body and kinder to others' bodies? Would you like to create confidence in the bedroom and beyond? How has your sex life, or lack of it, affected other areas of your life? Have you lost your mojo and wondered where to find it? Everyone has the potency to be a sexual superhero. Get ready to listen, sense, and play with the sexualness that is you. Now, here is the host of The Pleasure Zone, Body Whisperer, Melitza Yelenich. Hello, hello, and welcome to The Pledge Zone. I'm your host, Milica Jelanić. For those of you who have never tuned into this radio show until today, surprise, this is a sex talk radio show. And how lucky are you that you chose to stay on tonight? Uh, I'm lucky, and I feel really excited that you chose this. So thank you for listening. And um, for those of you who have never been on, I'll just give you a little brief about who I am. So uh, and what I do. So I am, uh, for one, I'm actually a mom, for those of you who don't know that and might never have heard my stories about my daughter on here. Um, and I have a super comfort zone with talking about sex and bodies. So that's why I have this show. And one of the things that contributes to that is that I work with bodies. I have been trained um, through different modalities to work with bodies. So one of the modalities that I do is something called the mitzvah technique. You can look that up online. You can even look up, a, I think I have a YouTube video up there on that, and if I don't, I will soon. Um, and it's a type of body movement, and it's the spine through gentle movement. It's kind of like some people say it's like having yoga done to you. Uh, a lot of other people say it's just like osteopathy. Uh, so it is. It's got a lot of variety of different things um, involved with it. And it's an amazing, amazing body work that is so gentle and kind to the body to allow it to release. Um, never move beyond uh, what your body isn't willing to release. Uh, even though your ego might not be willing to release it, your body is like, yeah, thank you for releasing that. <laughs> whatever that happens to be. Uh, so we, uh, we I say we because my mom and I have a, a business together as well. And we also do a lot of other things, uh, including the body work, energy work. And I'll talk a little bit about that. And we do something called radionics. For those of you who are in the U.S., you might have heard it. It's an underground type of um, work that is done using machines. And it's something that in the U.S. is completely illegal. So if it is something that interests you, my American friends, you can contact me on my website, www.melitzajelenic.com. That's M-I-L-I-C-A-J-E-L-E-N-I-C.com. Uh, for those of you who have ever heard of REM machines uh, or any of that technology using uh, frequencies and vibrations and photons to treat bodies, um, that is something that, yes, is not available in the U.S. unless you happen to know the secret person who knows the secret person who can hook you up. Um, in Canada, it's almost becoming like that. So until we actually get shut down on that front, I'm letting the world know you can find us. And also... The other type of work that I do is something called access consciousness, which is something I was introduced to about four or five years ago. Uh, it's a body of work that uses different tools uh, that are verbal processes, clearings, states that change your life, questions that change your life. Things like all of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. It's one of those statements that has literally changed my life. And something called the bars, which is a energetic process that when you touch different spots on the body, it releases all kinds of things from limitations that you have with bodies, your money, relationships, sex, healing, you name it. It's like everything that you ever thought you had an issue or limitation with can literally get cleared through having your bars run. And the verbal processes are a super bonus to bring all the stuff up to allow that to clear with total ease. One of the things that uh, comes with access consciousness, um, if you continue training, is something called body processes. And there are many, many different ones. And one of my favorites is a, something called the access energetic facelift. And uh, last week I had a class and I had, I think, seven or eight people in it. And it was wonderful to watch people tap into the energies that can start to not just uh, like uplift your face, but they're actually uplifting for your life. 
and they are just so dynamic. Um, I totally fully enjoy and love facilitating that class and also uh, running that process on bodies. And there's so many more too, depending on uh, what's going on with your body. There's ones that um, are geared for different uh, different things that are going on. So something to check out if you're curious about energy work. It's very dynamic uh, type of work and. Um, I know that because I have studied in different modalities and they all have, uh, they all have their bonuses. And another modality that I studied is Reiki. Uh, so I am a, um, a Reiki master. Um, that's another thing that I do. And I've been doing that for 18 years now. So it's actually 18 years this past July. Uh, so I'm like, wow, how did that fly? <laughs> and uh, and like, what else can I add to my roster? Actually, I've been really interested in bodies and energy work and um, all things strange and unusual since I was really small. So my curiosity has led me to all different things. So um, also one of the very fun things I got to do last week was um, I got to work at a party and do tarot readings. So one of the things I do is I use um, tools of access consciousness with tarot cards to bring awareness to things that I see that are coming up in your life um, as blocks. So people usually don't say anything to me and I just start reading the cards and what the issues are and where the things will flow and ask how we can create more of that. So that's one of the ways that I um, utilize the tool of tarot cards um, and have for many many years been trained with uh, psychic um, psychic teachers so I have lots of tools in that uh, umbrella as well so um, yes that's something I wanted to add and for one more week left August um, as I did last year as my anniversary of taking a class called Symphony of Possibilities um, is August. I am offering till the end of August to have an SOP session with me, a symphony session it's called. It's a distance, can be distance, can be in person, and it's $75 for an hour just until the end of August. Or if this happens to show up on a replay, you can uh, mention it to me and say, hey, I heard your deal on SOPs and I will honor that. So um, if you'd like to have an SOP with me in person or online until the end of August, it's $75 for an hour. Um, so that's awesome. That's like half price for those of you who don't know. And it is a life-changing, super fun thing to have run on you if you've never had it run. Please contact me or even if you would like somebody in your area, check out um, accessconsciousness.com to find somebody in your area. So on to our show for tonight as I've just taken up eight minutes of talking about myself. I really hope you guys enjoyed that because I certainly did. So one of the uh, things that I noticed I started to do a lot lately is fusing and resisting. And one of my dear friends, and she's not producing me tonight, so I'm going to mention it, um, Christine, has been gently, oh so gently, kicking my butt into creating shows for the future for this for this program, um, for my show, for the Pleasure Zone. And th there's been something in my universe that's just been like, no, I can't do it. The show's not talking to me until the show speaks to me. I know nothing. And I've been doing this. It's really been cute and not very effective. So um, today I thought, hey, what is this that I'm refusing and resisting? And what if I talk about that? Because I do get that other people just might be refusing and resisting something on this planet. So being the pleasure zone and all, I love talking about bodies. And we're going to talk tonight a lot about what are you refusing and resisting with bodies in particular. So for example, like for me, the other day I was refusing, absolutely refusing um, sitting. Like, And I knew that if I could just sit for a few hours, I could get this project done. And if I could get the project done, I could send an invoice out. And so funny, I'm like, wow, if I actually get this project out, I could send a really sweet invoice that would really contribute to paying my mortgage. And what the heck am I resisting this for? What is that? I was doing everything else under the sun. I happened to like desire making spaghetti sauce that day and lying on a porch with like sludge on my body because I thought, oh, cool, I'm going to have a girl's day out spa day with my mom and daughter. So there we were lying with Cree sludge all over our bodies looking like seaweed monsters. And that, that seemed to be a greater contribution to me 
than actually doing work for two hours or three hours and getting this invoice out. I'm freaking hilarious. I don't know if you're as hilarious as I am, but I know I'm hilarious. So today I was like, okay, what is this that I'm refusing so dynamically that if I were to choose it, would actually contribute to my life? Oh, oh, it's actually finishing some projects. Oh, procrastinator of magnitude. Oh, what if you just choose them? Oh, so I did. And, you know, when you are a procrastinator of magnitude, like I happen to be, uh, you might just find that you really can pull rabbits out of your butt and lucky charms and golden, happy, fun things come flying out. And you go, wow, how did that show up? Um, and every time I do it, I amaze me because I'm so amazing. And I'm like, wow, look what I pulled off. Guess what? I can actually pull that off without the stress of creating. For one thing, I create, quote, deadlines for myself. Um for these projects that I do for people, they don't actually give me these deadlines. I create them myself and then I absolutely resist doing them until I can prove I can pull it off in 10 seconds. And if I just pulled them off in 10 seconds, I got how much energy it was using in my body to refuse to actually do this project. So much so that I literally felt like I got hit by a two by four last night at like eight o'clock at night my daughter, who's seven and a half, is running around the house creating like crazy and like, I'm going to watch a movie. I'm going to read a book at the same time and I'm going to do a drawing all at the same time because I can. And I'm like, wow, awesome. I feel like passing out. And so I did. And at like o'clock in the morning, I was like, oh, it's three o'clock in the morning. I could wake up and I could do my project. Well, the whole house is quiet. Yes, I could do that. Or... I could lie here and stare at my daughter for hours, which is what I chose because I'm that adorable. So what I got when I woke up is I just started to create this project and I had this awareness of how I could create a total ease so that if I ever had to recreate it or edit it in a way, it would take me literally 10 minutes to recreate this project for anybody, anytime. So I was like, whoa, okay, so... Sometimes my refusing and resisting actually does create an awareness at some point for creating ease in the future. And sometimes it's just plain old procrastination to prove how spectacularly amazing I am at pulling rabbits out of my butt. So I'm wondering, when it comes to bodies, so for me it was movement yesterday. I was like refusing to actually sit down and it was like, no, I'd rather do this. I'd rather get up. I'd rather move and I'd rather do this and I'd rather do that. Um, and today I just did a combination of things. I was like, oh, I'll do this project. And while it's taking four hours to upload on my very, very slow living in the countryside internet, I'm going to go outside and stack some wood. Oh, cool. And now I've got all these things like floating in the air. It was so much more fun today to create in that way where I'm like, like, the juggler, like the magician, throwing all the different things up in the air and having all of these things just like just land so perfectly timed into my lap. And I got like five other projects on people with total ease. So sometimes, just sometimes when you have the awareness of choosing and you actually start to create, you might notice that the energy flows far easier than refusing and refusing and refusing and refusing to choose it. Um, that can create such stagnation and be so exhausting. For me, literally exhausted. Like, I was wiped out. Um, and I was like, I was even horny and I couldn't even choose sex, which was so unusual for me. Usually I'd be like, yes, I'm half asleep. Let's copulate anyway. Um, this time I was like, well, I'm going to bed. Don't even talk to me. Nobody speak to me. I didn't even have a headache. I was just like, wow, I'm so tired. And what was I really tired of? Frick, so many things. Tired of holding on to shit with people. Tired of not choosing for me. Tired of refusing to step up to the plate. Man, was I fucking tired. And today it's like, no, I'm choosing to step up to the plate. I'm choosing to create for me. I'm choosing to create for the planet. And oh my God, the crap that lifted off of my brain and out of my life was... Oh, what a leaf, I have to say. So when we come back from break, let's really get into this topic related to bodies and what we all know. 
Many of us have created a lot of limitations around sex and what we are willing to choose. Would you be willing to explore what has already been introduced as sexual practices on this planet? What else is possible beyond what we have already seen, heard, or thought of? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual revolution? Taking the taboo out of all aspects of sex, sexuality, and copulation. By tuning into The Pleasure Zone radio show with body whisperer Melitza Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on A2Zen.fm. What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? What does optimal cell health mean, and how can you create it? Pulsed electromagnetic field therapy by Swiss Bionics can improve your well-being in every area of your life. The PEMF mat stimulates cells to move and create space between cells for optimal cell function. How does it get better than that? Use two to three times per day for eight minutes will improve circulation and immune function. Cell metabolism and repair begins, and mobility also will increase. Do you desire better health? If you're interested or would like a session, call 613-473-3805 or in Toronto. Call or text 416-253-1617. Monthly rentals start at only $300 per month. Is now the time to choose Optimal Cell Health? This is The Pleasure Zone with body whisperer Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, please call us in the U.S. Call 815-880-8255-TALK or Canada 613-800-8736 or you can Skype us at A2Zen.fm. You can also make the choice to ask for comment by email by sending to Melitza at MelitzaYelenich.com. Now back to the program. Hello, welcome back to The Pleasure Zone. I'm your host, Milica Jelanić, and today the topic is, what are you refusing and resisting with your body? So in the chat room, um, my friend Carol, also one of my producers, was saying that she could think of at least five ways she's doing that with her body too. And I mentioned to her that I noticed the more I refuse things and resist things, the more, quote, tired I get. But what tired really is, and we both agree that what tired really is, is a dynamic way of avoiding even more. Like really refusing your post can be what's really, really exhausting. So for any of you out there who are walking around and you just feel like the weight of like an elephant is on your head and you just can't seem to move and it's like drudgery and and just like you can't get out of that swamp and you're wondering how do I get to a platform somewhere in this swamp so I can see above this sludgy crap what if you just choose it so when and by saying what if you just choose it I'm saying what if you just choose you what if you choose what works for you so what if what works for you and what works for somebody else are completely different? Cool. That's usually how it goes. And also, what potency of you are you refusing so dynamically that if you were to choose it, it could change everything for you and allow you to see, perceive, know, be, and receive way more of you 
all of you in totality that you never even knew existed. And everything that doesn't allow that will you destroy and uncreate it all times a godzillion. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyonds. For all newbies to access, check out accessconsciousnessclearingstatement.com or theclearingstatement.com to find out what that was that I just said. So one of the things that I started to notice that I was refusing is the speed with which I can actually create things. It's almost like I went, oh, well, I'm charging this much money to people, so therefore I've, you know, if I charge this much, I've got to fill the hours so I can actually make that much money uh, or whatever. And it's really funny because what I started to get was, yes, for the average person, doing whatever it was that I created, it would take them two hours. And for me, I just happened to like get on some kind of superpowers today where it took me literally like 12 minutes to create something. And I also get that that's not the average thing. So I get that I also can crunch time to be what would be somebody's two hours into 12 minutes. So I don't know, maybe you have a capacity for doing that too. So would you be willing to acknowledge how much time it would actually take somebody to do that if that's what you're refusing doing if you're refusing being as fast as you can totally be with speed accuracy and fun and joy maybe now's the time to start choosing it i I also got for me that so many times that i actually am refusing to be the speed of me which is the speed of space and just because wow that's so fast i you know what would i do might have so much time what am I going to do? I got to fill it. I got to look like I'm doing stuff. It's got to be really important. Come on. So I was wondering now, like if I were to choose to be the speed of space uh, and not refuse any part of me, what would I do? Would I? Who could I be? What would I choose? So it's really funny too. Like if you also in the chat room, we've got like somebody who's been thinking about doing a website for a couple of years uh, knowing that if they chose it, it would cre- create way greater for them. And they could also have it up and running in like three hours. But, you know, why would you choose that? What kind of crazy person would choose more? Now, that's just nuts. So whatever you do, don't choose it. <laughs> oh, she's going to do it now. It'll probably be up and running by morning. <clears throat> Seems, too, that I've already got phone calls coming through. So thank you to whoever's calling and I really am grateful for that. So one of the things, and right now I'm refusing answering the phone because it would just be really hilarious to have this conversation while on the radio. So what else am I refusing? Like I I was refusing a few things. So um, I was actually refusing doing laundry for a week and a half. So when I started to choose to do it today, there were seven loads to go up and I actually really, really like looking at laundry on my line. I have a funny thing about lining up the shirts and lining up the pants and like color. I just really love how laundry looks on a line. So it's really funny. I would refuse that because it's actually something I'll just stare at my window like minutes and totally enjoy it. And also I was refusing and this is funny because it just popped up too in the chat room, refusing eating well or refusing listening to your body for what your body desires. Because it's like, oh, my body would really love fresh juices every day. My body would love to be on like beet juice daily for the like weeks it feels. And I was refusing it because I was really cute. I'm like, oh, I can't stand the mess of the juicer. Ah, it's such a waste. There's like leftover this. So my mom and I, we'd been refusing for five years to buy a Blendtec that we really truly desired. And then the other day I said, screw it, mom. What if we take money out of our joint account and buy a goddamn Blendtec? So we bought the Blendtec and it changed our lives in 48 hours. So we went, we were just going crazy with Blendtec. Um, Blendtec, Blendtec. I don't get any money for advertising Blendtec, but I thoroughly enjoy the new blend tech that we have and we were refusing it and it was really funny it created so much ease in our lives that this is where the spaghetti sauce came from like whoa let's use the blend tech and make spaghetti sauce let's go make fresh juices let's go make applesauce let's make this let's make that i just and then we even 
did it with all of our compost so it could rot here. It was beautiful. So we just, we had a really crazy time um, with that and it was very exciting and we actually saved a lot of time and we created a lot of food for the future. Um, so, and for the present. And it was really funny that we'd both been refusing that ease in our worlds. And I'd been refusing doing the laundry, which was total ease in my world to just look at and have it done in space in my home that I don't have four laundry hampers filled with laundry, five loads of laundry or whatever, seven loads, actually, I think it was. So the places where I'm refusing, it's like, what else am I refusing that if I were to choose, it would create ease in my universe. And I'm aware of several things. And I'm choosing them and I'm going to start choosing more and more every day, the things that I know that I'm refusing the most so that, you know, those things, it's like they're still in your, it kind of like they're in your sitting there in your brain, they're sitting there in your body, they're sitting there in, you know, your etheric, etheric, metatheric, your astral bodies, they're sitting there in your energetic being kind of going, hey, 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 look at me. Hey, hey, please pay attention to me. Hey, hey, would you please just, this really would like to be completed or created or initiated or perpetuated or whatever it is, like, please put energy into this. And we refuse it so dynamically that we have, quote, no energy. If you're wondering why you have no energy, start looking at what you're refusing and resisting and start choosing it. If you're using and resisting going for walks daily and you're wondering, oh, and you're saying, oh, I'm just too tired. What if you started to walk? What would change for you? Do you get that you might actually add energy to your life instead of get more exhausted? So also when it comes to bodies, too, one of one of the things that came up with this is a friend of mine. I was joking with her um, and and not at the same time, but I like teasing the crap out of her. So I just said, like, well, what are you refusing? Are you refusing having sex with somebody that you think is, quote, unquote, physically unattractive? What if you were to choose it? And she's like, I could never do that. I'm like, well, that's an interesting point of view. Like, what if there is no such thing? Like, what if that's just an illusion? And what if what you're really attracted to is the energy of the person? And you didn't get to go on the judgment of that they're this tall, that they're this built, that their penis is this big. Uh, like, what if you didn't have a point of view about what a person looks like? I sometimes wonder if, in some ways, the world would be kinder if we were blind. But at the same time, I get that we would judge each other based on smell or some other ridiculous thing. So what if we just could have no judgment, period, based on anything, period, and just really acknowledge the goodness of peop of the people, of the being, of who you be, instead of like, oh, well, it's not this enough and it's not that enough. Um, I was going through a list of people on her dating um, profile and she was like, oh, not that guy, oh, not that guy. And I was like, wow, guess what? This guy's energy is really lovely. Yes, he's like average looking and yes, so he's not GQ model like, does that really matter? He's incredibly sweet and he's incredibly kind. So would you be willing to acknowledge and perceive the energy of the person? And, you know, they actually start to become so freaking yummy-licious that they are, like, so super attractive to you that you turn your body on in ways that you didn't even know were possible. Being turned on energetically is so delicious. What I noticed um, recently, I went to... Canada's Wonderland. It's a theme park in Canada that we have in Ontario. It's kind of like the equivalent of Disney World without all the uh, advertising that Disney World does. And there were people walking around half naked, um, you know, in going to this the splash park, going down water slides. And what I noticed is so many people's bodies, as much as they're they could be physically fit or physically unfit or whatever that is, it's just a judgment. The bodies are not turned on energetically. There were probably three people out of thousands that I actually went, whoa, that body's actually turned on. It's so phenomenal to me that we have so many half-naked people that could physically look attractive, could. But for me, I was like, wow, you're so not even alive and you're not turned on. So what are you refusing about actually being turned on and alive? And when we come back from break, let's talk more about that. Many of us have created a lot of limitations around sex and what we are willing to choose. 
Would you be willing to explore what has already been introduced as sexual practices on this planet? What else is possible beyond what we have already seen, heard, or thought of? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual revolution? Taking the taboo out of all aspects of sex, sexuality, and copulation. By tuning into The Pleasure Zone radio show with body whisperer Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on A2Zen.fm. What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? What does optimal cell health mean, and how can you create it? Pulsed electromagnetic field therapy by Swiss Bionics can improve your well-being in every area of your life. The PEMF mat stimulates cells to move and create space between cells for optimal cell function. How does it get better than that? Use two to three times per day for eight minutes will improve circulation and immune function. Cell metabolism and repair begins, and mobility also will increase. Do you desire better health? If you're interested or would like a session, call 613-473-3805 or in Toronto. Call or text 416-253-1617. Monthly rentals start at only $300 per month. Is now the time to choose Optimal Cell Health? This is The Pleasure Zone with body whisperer Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, please call us in the U.S. Call 815-880-8255-TALK or Canada 613-800-8736 or you can Skype us at A2Zen.fm. You can also make the choice to ask for comment by email by sending to Melitza at MelitzaYelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Pleasure Zone. I'm your host, Milica Jelanić, and today we're talking about what are you refusing and resisting with your body and so many other areas of your life as well. So one of the comments in the chat room is, and thank you for adding comments to the chat room, Carol, um, we, is that uh, oftentimes, um, she was saying that she oftentimes, uh, when she finally does choose for herself, she gets so turned on that she starts to resent anything that stands in the way of more. So then she turns the juicy thing off. Right. So anybody else do that? I'm sure Carol's the only one who's ever done that. Uh, I know I've done that. And I've actually watched a friend of mine recently do that. And I've been working with her um and she's really dynamic. She's been on the show, so I won't name her right now. Um, I've watched her recently. She created a really, really cool um, class that's like support for a year. S support isn't made the word, but it's like co-creation year using magic called the Magic Club. And um, she's an amazing creator. And then she creates stuff and then she runs away. Um, so if she is listening tonight, I hope she hears me and she hears this as a butt kicking and starts to stand behind the creation. So are you willing to stand behind your creations? Are you refusing standing behind anything that you create because it turns you on so much that other people might choose it? What if other people do choose it and are willing to give you money for it? And what if they choose it, copy it, and you get acknowledged for it, and somehow the money just flows? Are you willing to receive 
people copying you or anything that stands in your way of people judging it going, well, that's insane or people going to try and take it or what if you just be even bigger than all of that? Are you willing to be even bigger than anything that stands in the way of you receiving more? Being so turned on that you're like walking around all the time like the walking orgasm that you truly be. So today when I was doing these creations and I was finally like choosing instead of refusing, um, my body was like, woohoo, so turned on. I'm like really happy right now. My body is so happy. And and it's one of those times where I feel like I could be up for another 40 hours. I just feel so energized and so alive and so awake and so aware. And so would you just, where where are you refusing, choosing? And if you started to choose, what would it be like? So for some people, it gets so great, you have to turn it off. God forbid you actually have joy in your life. Whatever you do, don't choose joy. Don't choose ease. That would be crazy. That would just be too fun. That's insane. Don't do it. So for any of you who just went, oh, my God, I've got to do it now. Yeah, you're right. Now you've got to do it. So if anything that you notice that you start to go, oh, yeah, this is great. This is great. And then you turn it into a pretzel and judge the crap out of it so that you cannot create more. Uh, everywhere where you're actually judging your creations and judging anything that you would like to be choosing or judging, you know, if you're if you were refusing doing something for yourself and you finally choose it and go, oh, my God, that was a waste of time. Oh, my God. So and so wants my time. Oh, my God. Now everything is getting in my way of choosing, blah, blah, blah. Just acknowledge that you have fully chosen it because anything that you'd really truly choose and stand behind and commit to cannot be um destroyed that way so only you can totally destroy it so if you totally stay behind it and totally choose it and totally commit to whatever that is uh guess what you can't actually screw it up so would be willing to put your energy into it to actually flow your energy into your projects to stand behind your projects to commit to your life and your projects instead of refusing and resisting everything so there's this opposite scale of refusing and resisting called aligning and agreeing. Now, like wherever we refuse and resist, react re react and re resist and align and agree to anything, we actually stick ourselves with these points of view and then we create those points of view as our reality rather than creating our reality. It's like the points of view become our reality. So I I align and agree with vegetarians, therefore my whole life is based on being a vegetarian. And that actually used to be true for me, and it was like I was refusing so many things with that. Um, I would ref I would even refuse um, living with a person who was even like, would even like smell like meat. Um, it was pretty extreme. And it was really funny. So if I'm ref if I was refusing anybody who wasn't vegetarian, um, really funny thing is it really limits the people who can show up in my life. What I wasn't aware of is it was actually also creating a lot of um, energetic like barriers to people who would like to choose come to me for sessions. If I would just get over my fucking self and start acknowledging that maybe I'm not the demigod of the universe of knowing everything and being the smart ass that I think I am and being so perfect at everything. So wherever it was that I was like, no, this is the right way. Being a vegetarian is the correct way. It's saving the planet. It's saving humanity. It's the healthy choice. It's going to save everyone. Please choose it. I want to save all of you. And if you don't want to be saved, you can screw off. Um, and so now I'm like, okay, if you don't want to be, if you don't want to choose it, you don't choose it. If you do want to choose it, you do want to choose it. And I actually have so very little point of view about food right now that uh, it's really funny. Like I, it's like whatever my body is asking for is what I choose. So what is it that you're refusing for your body that you could be choosing that if you were to choose it could change everything for you? And if for you it's like, oh, I'm refusing stopping smoking even though I know that if I do that it'll add another uh, 72 minutes a day into my life that I keep taking off for cigarettes that uh, if I took that 72 minutes and actually, you know, paid myself $150 for it, that every day I would make $150 for that 
smoking. I don't actually smoke, but I'm just using this as an example. So you take that $150 and you multiply it by, you know, six days a week, say, and there's your $900, or say it's seven days a week of smoking, and there's your $1,050 that you could be making in that 70 minutes or whatever. And, you know, multiply that by four weeks and you've got yourself over four thousand dollars you could be making if you were to choose it but god forbid you actually start to say yes to the creation of your life and definitely refuse that and start choosing everything that distracts you from that all the smoke and mirrors that you're choosing with smoking how about that? Choose that instead. <laughs> so just using that as an example. So what else would you be choosing? Like where are you inve investing your time? What are you refusing investing in that you could be choosing investing in? Are you refusing investing in you, your business, your life, and your joy? And if you were to choose it, what would your life be like? Are you more interested in you know, investing your time in misery, discomfort, sadness, loneliness, patheticness, grumpiness, um, and, you know, judgment of others all the time. Is that more interesting to you? Does that take up, you know, more of your life and time than possibly going, oh, how about choosing something else? How about, and now what can I choose? And now what can I choose? And now what can I choose? So, I would like to see more people and more people um, start choosing the things that they've been refusing just for fun, just as an experiment to see what will show up. So, you know, refusing having people in my life that were vegetarian and the last four years, five years, starting to choose them, just going, oh, I'll choose everybody and anybody because, you know, there's a lot of fun people out there who are not vegetarians. One of my very dearest and best friends is not a vegetarian. Actually, most of my dearest and best friends are not vegetarians now that I come to think of it. And they've only entered my life in the last five years. And everybody that I was refusing receiving before based on, well, then I can't go out to dinner with you and I can't do this and I will not make you this because you'll show up in my house with that, blah, blah. Uh, really not fun. Man, I'm so glad you guys didn't meet me five years ago when I was um, really not fun. So I <laughs> uh, had a lot of rules in my life, rules to live by, because I had to create them to try and, you know, figure out the insanity of this universe just so I could try and fit into this universe. And as soon as I really acknowledge that, you know what, I really don't fit into this universe, and I'd really like to create a reality of that's beyond this reality that everybody else is choosing and as i've been choosing that more and more my reality has become really fun really interesting even when people are spouting shit at me and trying to be cruel it's funny it things are becoming funny to me i'm seeing where i'm actually genuinely a kindness where people are refusing being that so where are you also refusing being kind? Where are you refusing being an ass? What is required that you're refusing choosing? That if you were to choose it, could change everything for you dynamically and allow your life to open up in ways you never even knew were possible. And everything that doesn't allow that, will you now destroy and uncreate it all times a godzillion? Right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pot, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyonds. I have a little topic that I'd like to kind of get into after break that, you know, we're going into the naughty zone. Got to do at least five minutes or so of the naughty zone on every show. And part of the naughty zone is like, what are you refusing receiving from? So if you identify yourself as heterosexual, what are you refusing receiving from the same sex? If you identify yourself as homosexual, what are you refusing receiving from the opposite sex? And if you are bi, how cool are you? <laughs> so, and if you identify yourself as transsexual, what are you receiving, refusing receiving of the sex that you were actually born in? What are you refusing receiving about the sex that you more identify with? What are you refusing receiving? And if you are bi, what are you refusing receiving about more about either one or the other? Uh, and what are you identifying yourself with as being, um, you know, whatever, so much more balanced because you choose both. So there is something in everything where we identify ourselves and we start to 
um, that we start to refuse and resist stuff. So when we come back from break, contemplate that for a few minutes. Place those. What are you refusing and receiving? And when we come back, we'll talk about that a little more. Many of us have created a lot of limitations around sex and what we are willing to choose. Would you be willing to explore what has already been introduced as sexual practices on this planet? What else is possible beyond what we have already seen, heard, or thought of? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual revolution? Taking the taboo out of all aspects of sex, sexuality, and copulation. By tuning into The Pleasure Zone radio show with body whisperer Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on A2Zen.fm. What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? What does optimal cell health mean, and how can you create it? Pulsed electromagnetic field therapy by Swiss Bionics can improve your well-being in every area of your life. The PEMF mat stimulates cells to move and create space between cells for optimal cell function. How does it get better than that? Use two to three times per day for eight minutes will improve circulation and immune function. Cell metabolism and repair begins, and mobility also will increase. Do you desire better health? If you're interested or would like a session, call 613-473-3805 or in Toronto. Call or text 416-253-1617. Monthly rentals start at only $300 per month. Is now the time to choose Optimal Cell Health? This is The Pleasure Zone with body whisperer Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, please call us in the U.S. Call 815-880-8255-TALK or Canada 613-800-8736 or you can Skype us at A2Zen.fm. You can also make the choice to ask for comment by email by sending to Melitza at MelitzaYelenich.com. Now back to the program. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Pleasure Zone, and I'm your host, Milica Yelenich. So before break, I kind of brought up some stuff about what, where are you refusing receiving from, or if you're heterosexual, are you refusing receiving from the same sex? If you identify yourself as bisexual or homosexual, are you ref if, if you count yourself as homosexual, are you refusing receiving from the same sex? And I kind of went through some scenarios. So here's a curious question. So if you were stuck in a room blindfolded and you know there was a room full of people that were willing to offer you oral sex first are you refusing receiving oral sex because i know people who are are you are you refusing gifting it and whatever that is what if you were to choose it would you be willing to choose it just in case it would actually contribute to your life just it might it might not but if it did would you be willing to choose it so you're in a room you're blindfolded and they're people and all these people are kind people and all these people have energetic capacities and they're all willing to contribute to your body. And all you have to do is energetically choose, you know, your body will 
no, your body would like lean towards one body or the other. And you just, you know, muscle test your body to see which one would contribute most to your body. And you go, oh, that one. And that one's willing to give to you. So that gives you oral sex. And what if when you open your eyes, you're like, whoa, you know, as a woman, what if I were to identify myself as, uh, as a heterosexual and I go, whoa, okay, well, that was a woman. Well, that was interesting. So I could either go, wow, thank you so much for the gift that you be to my body. Or I could go into extreme judgment and shut off the receiving right there and then that could actually be a contribution. So or what are you re refusing receiving? Even when you start to get the gift that something is and you go, whoa, I can't receive that. I have judgments about what that should look like and who that should be from. So would you also be willing to play with that? Like whose body uh, is actually fun for your body and just see where it's magnetically pulled to. You know, if you had a blindfold on, where would your body be pulled to? And receive energy from those bodies. If you're refusing receiving energy from women, if you're a woman or if you're a man and you're, you know, whatever, you know those scenarios, whoever you're refusing receiving from, would you please just check and see if you were to receive energy from these people, what would your life be like? If you were re willing to receive judgment from them, what would your life be like? Judgment can be anything. It can be, oh, you're so sexy and or oh you're so ugly those are all judgments just so you're knowing what that is um and would you be willing to just acknowledge the bodies the energy and where your body would like to go and receive from and so just curious what are you refusing receiving and just on asking yourself that what am i refusing receiving that if i were to choose it could change everything and I know the easiest way for me to figure out what I'm refusing receiving is where I'll go, oh, I'd never, oh, I could never do that. No, 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 that's so wrong. Oh, no, no, that's refusing. So, you know, if you ever did that and you're like, no, 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 I could never have sex with a woman. No, 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 I could never have sex with a man. No, 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 I could never have a threesome. No, 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 I could never have an orgy. What if you were just like, hey, what would it be like if I did that? If I were willing to choose it, what would my life be like? What would it be like to receive from five people all at once in an orgy? What would that be like? Um, when I have one, I'll let you guys know. And though it's very similar to me to facilitating classes and I receive energy from all those people and I get turned on by it. So it is it is for me facilitating and doing energy work. It excites my body. I feel alive and I get turned on. So for any of you who are receiving Refusing being turned on all the time because you think it's going to be really funny or really awkward. Would you just be willing to just check on that and choose it just for a second, just one second, just choose it. Whoa, and then choose it again for another second, maybe even 10 seconds. What would that be like? So before we get off today, well, I might have just gotten off, but you guys can keep going and get off later. But um, for, uh, for all of you... Um, i uh, just like you to know that in the next few months, I'm going to be hosting some pretty cool classes. Uh, one of them is coming up in October, starting October 8th. I'm going to be um, facilitating a bars class in Toronto that is going to precede uh, a, a four-day um, class that together are called Five Days to Change Your Life. And that four-day class that follows mine is going to be facilitated by Lisa Bennett, who has a show on this radio station, and Liam Phillips, who also has a show on this radio station. And both this dynamic duo duo are coming across Canada, uh, facilitating Five Days to Change Your Life with different hosts. And they're going to be doing um specialty classes like curing the incurables and stuff like that. And I'm also going to be hosting one of my favorite producers, Christine McIver, in November um, in my area. So check all that out on my website coming soon. I'll up that. Thank you for choosing to listen to The Pleasure Zone. Melitza Yelenich will return next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on a2zen.fm. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.